Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about what I love and what I hate about my Ford Super Duties. So I have two Ford Super Duty trucks. I have a 2017 Ford F-250 Lariat, you know, the crew cab FX4, pretty well loaded up. And I also have a 2018 Ford F-350 Limited, again, crew cab FX4, all that kind of stuff. Both of them have the 6.7 Power Stroke diesel in them, you know, 4x4, pretty well loaded up. So I bought the 2017 brand new. I've had that for, I don't know, two and a half years, something like that right now. I've had my 2018 F-350 for about a year. So in the summer of 2017, that's when those new Fords had come out, you know, not long before that at some point, you know, and so I figured, whatever, I'm just gonna do my due diligence. I'm gonna go to the local Ford dealer, just check them out, and that way I say I did, you know, but then I'm gonna go get my Duramax. <laughs> and guess what? As soon as I got in that truck, as soon as I walked around it and just look at the features it was loaded with, I just tried to convince myself that I still wanted that Duramax, that Denali, and there's no way that I could. The features on this thing were so far superior and ahead of its time. So I get it. Now there's the new Duramaxes out, right? The new Denali's out, and it's kind of tempting to want to go over one of those and try it out for a while, and I may end up doing that at some point, but I still love my Super Duties. They're not perfect. There's some things I do hate about them, and we're going to get into that. So anyway, my Ford F-250 Lariat, so not even one of the Platinums or Limiteds or a King Ranch or anything, but just a Lariat was more than that Duramax Denali. It was crazy, but it was just one of those things. If I'm gonna pay a whole bunch of money, I wanna get what I want. And that Ford was so far superior just in the technology, the safety, the features that it had, I wanted to go with that. So I'm curious to know, and I think others are too, do you guys like these same things? Do you hate the same things? Are there other items, features that I missed, maybe features that my trucks don't have, something that I even don't know about. So I am not brand loyal at all, right? I mean, I've had a lot of Fords, I've had GMs, I've had Rams. I think I had somewhere in the ballpark of 11 or 12 trucks. I don't know. When I was putting together the idea for this video, I started kind of trying to list them all off, but something like that in my 22 years of driving. And like I say, those new Duramaxes look pretty stinking sweet. So I very well may try one of those out. Hey, real quick, please subscribe. Hit that button below, okay? Subscribe to this channel, head to Facebook, Good Works Tractors, okay? If you just Google it, Good Works Tractors on Facebook, on Instagram, go to my website. I have a lot of great tractors and attachments. I do a lot of cool videos on tractors and attachments primarily, but I sprinkle in some stuff on trucks and trailers as well on occasion. Thanks for watching, here we go. Well, hopefully you like it. <laughs> I took the time to at least wash it. It wasn't really clean at all in the last video but uh, and believe me it's not perfect here either it is a winter time in michigan but washed it up gave it a little quick uh scrub down on the inside didn't do the floor mess nothing like that so don't hate on me too hard for that all right okay so i'm gonna tackle a few things outside the truck and then we're gonna go inside where it's warmer because <laughs> i'm freezing my butt off here so i'm really impressed by the simple things in life but sometimes they also confound me so got a couple things on the key fob itself that i want to talk about First one was a really cool feature. I'm way behind the times, didn't know about it until about a year ago, but you can roll the windows down right here. Not so important for the winter time, but in the one month of summer that we have, it's really nice. So all I'm gonna do is press the unlock button. I'm gonna press it a second time and hold it. I think it's for at least three or four seconds. One, two, I'm holding it this time. And there they go. So that feature is really cool. Now the confounding part. I don't know how to put these windows back up with the key fob. I don't know if there is a way. I tried to find out online, search some forums, search Google, see what came up. It looks like there's an ability to change some settings in the key fob or program something different here if you have Forescan. I don't have that, maybe it's worth getting. I don't know if anybody can get it or if that's only for certain people. I don't know about that kind of stuff. Anyway, leave a comment below. I'd like to know if you can find a way to make the windows go back up after you roll them down. So it's the simple things in life that give me pleasure. <laughs> and so essentially you got the hidden key here, right? So if the key fob goes dead, the battery dies, you can still get in and out of the truck. A little key there, put it right here. It's locked right now. I can unlock it that way, pull it out. Here we go. And then it's uh, unlocked so I can, yep, lock that way. Locked. So pretty cool. Little hidden key there, little bonus. So the most annoying feature about this truck is the stupid honk, the stupid beep, the horn that honks when you close the door if you have the truck on. And I don't know how to turn that off. I talked to Ford Service about it. They said there's no way to do it unless you get Ford scan and there's some setting, some other way that you can do that and turn it off, but it's not something that Ford Service can do. It is so annoying. Let me show you what I mean. So truck's on right now. Say I'm in it, doesn't matter if I'm in it, out of it, whatever. Doors open, that's just fine. I go to close it. 
there it is. So again, that feature just drives me nuts. I hate the beeping, I can't get it turned off, and you know, what I typically do if I need to open my door, opening it's fine, right? I'll just close it to just about that far, and that's about as far as I'll go. It avoids the beeping then, but it's just an annoyance, you know? Come on, guys. So one of the other features that I love and that I uh, saw recently somebody else hates is touching the inside of the handle to unlock the vehicle. I absolutely love that. Both my trucks have that, my wife's Expedition has that. It's the best thing ever. It's pretty straightforward, it's easy to use, and it's reliable. So you can see it, and maybe from your angle, it's somewhere right in here, you can see the, uh, the lock right there on the inside, but I have my key in my pocket. Here, I'll, I'll pull it out so you can see it here. Just so you can see it's right, right by me. There's no magic trick, obviously. I'm not too worried about that. But uh, simply touch the inside, and it's unlocked. It's as simple as that. You can do it with this one here. You can do it with the other side as well. The rear doors are not going to have the, the touch, and you're not going to relock it. It just stays unlocked this way. Really cool feature. I absolutely love it. You don't have to take your key out of your pocket at any point. You can unlock it with it in your pocket. You can turn the truck on with the push button without this. So it just stays in your pocket the whole time. Or, you know, if you're a lady driving an expedition or a truck or whatever, it stays in your purse or whatever. But you never have to get this out of your pocket. It's super easy. Just when I get out of my truck, I hit the lock button on the door, close it up, good to go. Okay, so this one here is for you guys shopping for trucks, all right? And so you can lightly see it here in a, in a lot of pictures you can when you're looking online. But this is one of the little symbols that I looked for, and this is the Bliss system. It says specifically blind spot radar. So I think there's two different versions of Bliss, all right? And so I think um, there's Bliss that has the little, the little dot, the little light that comes on in the side view mirrors, and a lot of vehicles have this. If you're driving down the road, pay attention when you're going by a car, and you'll see a little light of some kind, a little orange or amber light typically that lights up in the mirrors, and that's what that is. And so I think that's the main version of Bliss, but this one also has what's called, I think it's cross traffic alert. And so if I'm backing up like out of my driveway or out of a parking lot or whatever, it'll let me know that there's an oncoming vehicle or something from the right or from the left if there happens to be. And so I really love this. My Lariat does not have this feature. It's something I wish I would have thought more about when I initially purchased my truck. I won't buy another vehicle that doesn't have this. I really, really like this safety feature. So on my gray truck, the stock tires lasted for about a year or so before I finally caved in and got new tires. Uh, however, when I got this truck here, one of the first things I did, actually before I had the truck, because I bought this truck used out of Denver, Colorado, had it shipped in here to me. One of the first things I did though was just have my, my tire guy get some BFs and put them on here. These are the same as the stock tire size. Uh, they're going to be the 275 20s that are on here, okay? So 275 20s, same thing as stock. You go any bigger and not, it's not so bad on the back, but on the front, um, it already rubs with the, the mud flaps that are on there when I'm turning. It already rubs even with the stock size that's on there. I just don't want to deal with any more rubbing or having to do a lift or a, um, a leveling kit or anything like that to try to uh, account for that. So I kept them stock. I would have liked to have a little bit bigger, but I think it looks pretty good the way it is. Big upgrade over the stock tires. So what I hated about the stock tires was the fact that in the winter time, they were horrible on traction. I mean, absolutely abysmal. Even in wet conditions in the spring, summer, any time, you know, they were slipping, they weren't keep keeping good traction. Uh, they were a real piece of crap all around. So they were nice and quiet. However, I've had, I can't tell you how many sets of these BFs. I love them. They last a really, really long time. Surprisingly long for the more aggressive tread pattern that they are. Really good traction in the winter time. I go out west to Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, that kind of thing. Uh, doing a lot of off-roading out there when I'm hunting as well. Great traction, that kind of terrain also, and just a really good all-around tire. One of the features I love about Ford trucks, especially these Super Duties, I'm six foot three. This is still a tall bed for me to get into, so I just absolutely love the, the, the step, you know? So you just pull it out, easy enough, pull your handle, oop, there we go, it locks in place, and up you go. I've got a microphone in my pocket here, so it's hard to bend that leg. Reverse the process right here. And I don't know why, but I really don't care if you guys see my, my license plate here or not. I know a lot of vehicles, you see them for sale on Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, anywhere. They're covering up the license plate. I don't, I don't understand the reason. If I'm driving down the road, if you're here, if I'm in any parking lot in the world, you can see my license plate number and then you could see me come in and out of the vehicle. I, I don't know what it matters. Am I overthinking or am I missing something? I don't know, but there it is for you guys. So I'm rocking a Gator soft tonneau cover. This is gonna be a tri-fold tonneau cover that's on here. 
So I love the trifolds, the soft tops. They're very lightweight. If you need to take the whole thing off, you can do it in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but they've got a little bracket, one on each side here, that you can undo. It'll fold up this way. You know, you're, you're actually able to take these and push them right down in there. That way, when they fold flat, they're not going to potentially dig in and harm anything. And then you could fold it all the way up here. Got little buckles here that so you can buckle it up and keep it open this far if you want. Again, you can take the whole thing off in just a couple of minutes. Very lightweight. It's not a huge, heavy piece of um, material equipment that you have to deal around with and try to manhandle. It moves around really easily. Does a really good job keeping all the uh, the liquid out, the water out, rain, snow, that kind of thing as well. So, and again, just pop it back out here. You'll put it down. Lock them under the rail there into place and you're good to go. The Gator Trifold Soft Tonneau Cover. Okay, again, I get this on Amazon. I'll post a link up to it. You can get one to fit your truck as well. Real quick, I don't even think I can play it because I don't know about the copyright stuff, but that's one of my favorite songs right there, Seminole Wind. You guys love that song too or what? Okay, so we've got the Power Fold and the Power Telescoping side view mirrors here, okay? And so these are big honking mirrors. I absolutely love them. You got the split mirror, so you have the, on the bottom there, it's a manual movement mirror there, okay? But on the top, you got the power movement, so you can power angle it however you need to. However, if you hit the telescoping here, this is gonna slide them out, and this side's gonna slide it in, if you see that button there. And so I'm gonna hit this side. You know, and they're gonna go out, and then obviously hit the other side and they go in. So these mirrors are so big that having them fold in is a really key feature, something I use all the time. It's not something that I would use on smaller mirrors very often, but in my garage, even at home, just because these stinking things stick out so far that it's just nice to have that ability there. So very nice feature as well. So next thing I want to talk about is storage inside these trucks. And it's amazing all the places they've put storage compartments. You know, you just have extra storage kind of everywhere, you know, and I love underneath here, an optional safe. Both of my trucks have it, my Lariat and uh, the Limited here both have a safe inside there. You know, you've got the cup holders, obviously that can slide this way. You can make four cup holders. Uh, you can pick this up and there's more storage underneath here. Some hunting licenses, you know, check cash, coins for the tolls, all that kind of stuff. Another little spot there, I guess, just for a, a hidden uh, key fob if you want to. From what I can tell, I, I don't I don't know, I haven't looked in the manual, but you have that location there. I don't think that that's for the um, dead key fob start for the truck. I think that's actually over here where you put a key fob down in there. Sorry, it is gross. I haven't cleaned it out, but um, I don't even know how that stuff gets down in there. This thing's covered up all the time. That's how it goes. So anyway, um, you've got storage all over the place. Plus, you know, knife down there. You got all this door storage over here. You know, it's just full of storage. In the back, you've got good storage under the seat, okay? It can go all the way across. You know, there's got that little divider there. There's more storage on the other side as well. A lot of space underneath there, and you can also lock it right there. I have never done that, never tried. I just uh, had somebody tell me in one of my other videos that you can lock the storage underneath here, which is pretty sweet. And that's one of the reasons I love posting videos, because there's a lot of other people out there that know things I don't, and it's a good way to share information. So make sure you read the comments. One of the features that originally sold me on this truck was this panoramic moonroof or sunroof. I don't know. Somebody can tell me the difference. So only the front panel up here is going to slide back. This is a fixed pane that's back here, okay? But you also have the cover that can roll all the way up. It can stop right here or it can roll all the way forward and entirely close it off as well. So, and of course, you can treat it like an additional, like a traditional roof and just pitch it open in the back or you can slide it the whole way. So these are your controls right here for the moonroof, okay? So these two are for the cover, so you can open it or close it with these. And so let's see here, this is gonna slide it forward. So I'm gonna hit that button and you'll watch it come forward. It's gonna stop right there in the middle. If you do it again, it's gonna keep going the whole way. So it takes two clicks to get it to go the whole way. So and then you can see this whole thing will slide back. Again, there's no real way, I don't think, for that, uh, I don't know how the design would work if you're going to make that rear pane open up as well. That'd be pretty creative. Oh man, the gambler. I tell you what, if you don't love prime country on Sirius, there's something wrong with you. Next feature, 360 degree cameras, okay? So right now the base or the default setting, I don't know if you can change default or not. You have the forward camera, which will turn off once you go above a few miles an hour. It's 
turns off for safety. Um, and then this one here is gonna be your 360 degrees. So you've got a camera under each mirror, one in front, one on top of the um, uh, cab on the back side, and then one on the tailgate as well. So what you can do is adjust your settings. So you hit that right there, or your views rather. So here's your 360 degree view. If you wanna look up front, that's just the front view. This view here, a little bit of a split view. You can go to just the tailgate view, or sorry, the cab view, which is going to look down into your bed. This is great if you have a, uh, a gooseneck, although, you know, mine over there, zoom in a little bit. See that fuel tank in the back? <laughs> well, once I put that fuel tank in there, I could no longer see the gooseneck, and so uh, this became, I guess, worthless as far as that goes. But it's an option, and then there's auxiliary, which I have nothing hooked up to that, but that would be an option as well. So. Again, a lot of options there. Love these 360 degree cameras. They are amazing. Again, I don't think I'll ever own a vehicle that doesn't have them. Just from a safety perspective, just to so you know everything that's around you, especially at home, I back up my drive back into my garage. Great to know where everything is at. Plus all the sensors with the Bliss system and safety awareness, it'll beep at you if something is uh, near you or coming near you. It's just one of the other great safety features and it's very important to me. Okay, so one of my favorite features that I have in my truck is gonna be uh, this little area right here. So this is gonna be your adaptive cruise control. And so, again, if you're shopping for these trucks, look close for this little area right here because if it doesn't have these arrows that are on here, it's not gonna be the adaptive style cruise control, which I think is super cool. It's very intuitive um, and it provides a lot of additional control and again, safety. And that's one of the things about these trucks that I think has really come a long ways in the last you know five years even is just safety features. And this is one of the great features that you have. And so the great thing about adaptive cruise control is that once you have your cruise control set, you can use those arrows one way or another and you can adjust how much space is between you and the vehicle that's in front of you. And so if you want to just kind of ride their butt and be pretty close up to them, you can do that. But if you want to give yourself a lot more space, you can do that as well. Typically, I'm somewhere in the middle there because if you get too much space between you and the vehicle in front of you, cars are just going to constantly cut in front of you and you're going to keep just lag him further and further back. If you're too close though, I just, you know, it's too close for comfort. So typically I'm somewhere right in the middle there. You have four or five different adjustments that you can make as far as decreasing or increasing the length that you have there. So adaptive cruise control, very cool. Hey guys, so I do want to take just a minute here really quick and tell you about these floor mats here. So I had thought about power washing these off, but then I thought, hey, let's see how dirty and nasty they look and then we'll pull them up and we'll see what it looks like underneath. But these things do a really good job staying in place. You've got a couple little tabs here that you can kind of push it down on and they stay locked in place. Do a really good job all the way over to the side. Do a really good job with these edges here all around, keeping everything trapped in here. And of course you can still get dirt and things all over the place, but uh, underneath though, it's doing the job there. Primarily a really good job of protection on there. Easy to, to get out without spilling anything. So if we take a look underneath, you can see it's doing a really good job protecting there. These are the little tabs that they're gonna stay, uh, help them keep them in position and stay in place there. So does a really good job. That's annoying me right now, along with all this other stuff. I'm gonna have to vacuum it out, but you know, that's, that's the way it goes if you're using a truck. So that is the fourth set of Husky liners that I've had. I've had two for my trucks. I've had them for my wife's Expedition and also had it for her Tahoe that she had before we traded that piece of junk in and got the Expedition. So anyway, I'll post a link to those Husky liners on Amazon where I buy them for all my vehicles so that you can buy them as well. So I think I'd be doing an injustice if I didn't at least mention the power of these power strokes, these six sevens. You know, I never, never have concerns or fears or reservations about what I'm towing, uh, going up hills, any kind of terrain, loading these trailers fully up with tractors and attachments and doing whatever I need to do with them. They are extremely capable machines. I just it's super impressive, you know, I mean, and same can be said for your Duramaxes and any other of the full size trucks out there. So I'm not knocking those at all because they're really all just amazing, incredible engines and machines, but um, really love what they do. You know, pull them. This is a 32 foot gooseneck here and I can load it up with whatever I need to, you know, but just never hesitates. Uh, good braking power as well. Good systems there. You know, everything goes together. It's just a well thought out, well designed truck here. And I'm really happy to own a couple of them. If you want the LED headlights, which I do, and I did then, I guess I just thought it would be an easy conversion, get the LED headlights to begin with. So it's an expensive proposition to go ahead and convert those over with the factory LEDs. So it kind of threw that out the window. And then when I went to look up and research how to convert the halogens that are stock on the Lariat that I have to LEDs, 
man, they have really made that challenging to make a simple conversion. What used to be a simple conversion, it's quite a process now. And if you want to get down into the fog lights and get those replaced as well and convert it over to LEDs, you know, that is just, it's frustrating. I mean, there's no reason to make it that difficult to do so, but um, I didn't want to get into it. So I'm stuck with the, the halogens right now on my Lariat. I do have the LEDs on my Limited and I absolutely love them. I would highly recommend them. It's such a clean, white, bright light at night. It's a significant difference. And really for me, the LED headlights are one of the must haves. All right, so something else I'm gonna complain about here is gonna be the location of your outlets. Why are they over here on the passenger side when they're not over here on the driver's side? So, you know, I keep my phone over here. You know, even if you kept your phone down here, you have your car charger, it's plugged in way over there. And for me, it's, you know, draped across right over here or down here, whatever else. Now I will say that you've got some USB outlets in here. So if you want, just want to do a USB up to there and plug your, you know, into your phone right here or whatever, you know, sometimes you have dash mounts up here and, and all that kind of thing as well. But still, then you have to have your compartment open here. And it's, again, a minor thing, guys, but I am kind of like that. <laughs> so I really wish that these outlets were over here or duplicated or replicated somehow so that you could have more outlets and more options there so the cord would be out of the way you know wish it was tucked somewhere you know down in here or underneath here or whatever you know just right there so it's just kind of more streamlined doesn't cover up anything else because you know i'm constantly worried about my phone um, draining battery and everything else and i want to make sure it stays charged as much as possible and especially if you're using it for gps or something like that yeah there is navigation on here however it's just not the same i really prefer my phone navigation so one of the other things that I really like are gonna be the LED lights that are inside the bed. There's a little button that's right inside the bed rail on, on the left-hand side if you're looking into it. Just push that in and there's gonna be a little LED light, one on either side there that shine light back in there. Not super bright, but very nice to have that when you're in the dark, especially for me uh, when I'm loading up a, a tractor at night or if I'm going hunting in the morning or at night. It's just a nice way to have that extra light there. You know, I have a tonneau cover on my Limited right now. I used to have one before I had the um, uh, the external fuel tank added on there, but really nice feature. It's a nice touch and one of the benefits of owning a Super Duty. Okay, so I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I am six foot three and 200 pounds, and I fit in here very well, you know. So this is, I, I haven't touched this front seat. This is the position that this front seat would be in if I'm driving in it, which is pretty much all the way back, if not all the way back. And I still have this kind of room here in the second row. And so yeah, you're not going to be driving around with four adults or five adults, I guess, in a vehicle all the time. But, you know, when we go on our hunting trips out west a lot, it's super convenient, super nice to have this kind of space here. And even with the kids, you know, we have three kids. And so when they're all here in the back row, it's nice to have enough space here so they can put stuff down. We take this vehicle actually a lot on trips, even though we do have the expedition as well. Uh, it's just nice. You have all that storage space there in the, the trunk, you know, in the truck bed there. Uh, to store things, you know, for our trips as well. So it's just a really nice second row. And I probably come to appreciate it more because of the fact that back in 2007, when Ram had the, the quad cab, that was a really big thing at that point. You know, I had the quad cab. And so for years and years, I had that truck. And the second row was just, you could never do this in the second row with an adult. You always felt squished no matter what it was. And, um, you know, so I guess I have the appreciation for all of this room, even though I've heard complaints about it. I've, I've heard people, I've seen videos where people have complained about this big waste of space that's back here. And it's all perspective on what you're going to be using the truck for. And for me, I greatly appreciate this kind of space in the second row. Really quick here, guys. One of the other things to look for, if you're just doing some shopping online and trying to figure things out before you get to a dealer, or even if you're going to have a truck shipped to you, like what I did, check out things like this in the back. There's going to be different configurations. They're not all going to have the uh, um, car charger outlet there, the USBs, and the wall plug outlet, the 12 volt, okay? So some of them are only going to have a couple of these. Some of them are going to have different configurations. This configuration right here has everything. So if you can see in a picture of some kind, because they don't always take close-ups, these dealers don't, but if you can see all of these different outlets here and the heated seats, you know that you have the max, max configuration right here in the back. And again, if you're picky like me, you're nitpicky, you're spending a lot of money, you just want everything you can possibly get. This is one of those things that I look for. Well, there you have it, guys. The things that I love, the things that I hate about the Ford Super Duty trucks. And this is going to be the new style of Super Duties that have been out since 2017. There's always design updates and changes and that kind of thing, but I've got a 2017, I have a 2018, and this shows you a lot of the things that are available for options and some of the 
higher end series, I guess, you know, or higher end models with the Lariats and the Limiteds and Platinums and King Ranches and that kind of thing. So um, hope you enjoyed it. If you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you check out Facebook, Instagram as well. A lot of cool stuff on tractors, trailers, and trucks. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.